So let's get in to a misconception that we often see kids have when it comes to subtraction. Now let me take a moment to describe the difference between a misconception and a mistake. Both often lead to a wrong answer. And so if we don't dig into how the students are thinking about it, we don't often know if it's a mistake or a misconception. So a mistake is often when a child misremembers something like a fact or a procedure. It happens usually when they're trying to follow a rule and a procedure, but they don't remember the exact steps or they see a fact, like sometimes when I see four times three, I think seven, just because I see four and three, and I think that makes a seven, because I added instead of multiplying. That's a mistake. That is not something based in my understanding of mathematics, and that's when misconceptions happen. Misconceptions actually happen as a natural development of students' understanding. They, what they are doing in the moment makes sense to them. It is based on their mathematical understanding at the moment, not just because they misremembered a fact or they didn't do the steps properly, okay? So that's the difference between mistakes and misconceptions. Now, this one relates to when students are developing their strategies and thinking about subtraction problems. We see it commonly when kids are given a problem like this, 37 minus 19. They, not all kids, but a lot of kids instantly want to change that to make it easier because 37 minus 20 would be so much easier. And they can solve that one very quickly. They come up with the answer of 17, but then they're unsure what to do. Do I add one? Do I subtract one back in? And so, this misunderstanding, this misconception that some kids have around it is not a mistake. It's often based in their understanding of the numbers, the number relationships, and their understanding, understanding of what subtraction really means. So in order to help students as they are working through their understanding of this strategy and of what subtraction really means, I really encourage you to be putting problems in context. Instead of just the bare numbers there, put it into some kind of story problem because then it makes more sense and they can understand what that 19 means when they change it into a 20, okay? The other thing I would include is lots of visuals. Having kids model this on a number line, it becomes really evident whether they should add one or subtract one after they subtract that 20, okay? All right, now it's your turn. Let us know in the comments a misconception that you have seen your students have when it comes to subtraction. And let me clarify one final thing. When we ask what you see kids are struggling with around addition or subtraction or multiplication or division, whichever one of these videos you are watching, um, it is not when kids just don't know their facts. I'll ask that you don't put that one in the comments, okay, as something that kids are having a misconception around. There might be a specific fact that kids are struggling with or a strategy that you see them trying to use as they are working on building their understanding of their facts, but a blanket description of kids just don't know their facts, that is not a misconception. That's something that we are helping them build an understanding of. And so what specifically are you seeing that they are struggling with when it comes to learning and understanding the basic facts when it comes to addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division? All right. So let us know what kinds of misconceptions kids are having when it comes to building their understanding down in the comments.